Well, I'll tell you what. I mean, the, the, the numbers are, are astounding. Uh, the, um, the Americans, Americans uh, people in our country, hardworking Americans, spent $135 billion complying with the tax code. And yet, you know, the other side insists on raising taxes. And, and, and I, again, let me, let me bring up some facts, because I want to make sure that we, that we bring up the facts. There, I've, got, I've got three proposals that, that the, uh, the other side had. I sit on the budget committee, and uh, we discuss these at length in the budget committee. We also discuss them at length, uh, at least some of them on the floor. One of them, the uh, CBC Progressive Caucus Substitute. This is the substitute to what we're doing, which is our plan to incentivize the economy by, by allowing Americans to keep more of their money so that they can spend it, invest it, creating more jobs. Their, this plan raised taxes, uh, increased taxes by $44 billion in 2004, by then $420 billion over five years, and $875 billion over 10 years. And by the way, it also cut defense spending at the same time. So they raised taxes, but they can't fund or didn't want to fund defense, and we know how important that is. There was, of course, the, uh, the Blue Dog budget proposal that was discussed here on the floor, and I was here for that debate, uh, which basically has no support to increase the economic, uh, to, to, to get the economy going. Um, but uh, it balanced the budget by raising taxes. What a concept. <laughs> yeah, think about that. The economy's not doing too well, so you raise taxes to balance, uh, the, balance, balance uh, the budget. Uh, this proposal would have raised taxes by $124 billion in 2006 to uh, 2011. Um, these are their proposals. Here they are. And then, of course, you had another one, which raised taxes by $128 billion over 10 years and had much more in uh, government spending as well. Of course, you know, just let's just spend more. Let's just spend more money, send more money to the bureaucracy in D.C., and let's just spend it all. Let's find great ways of spending it. But then they'll say, when we say no, we've got to look at fraud, we've got to cut fraud, cut abuse, cut misspent, uh, misspending of money. They say, oh, but you're cutting, you're cutting essential services. We've heard about the cuts in um, well, for example, in, in uh, Medicare. I've heard that on the floor of this house many, many times. We'll probably, uh, we heard it tonight, we'll probably hear it later on tonight, and we'll hear it tomorrow, and the day after, and the day after, and the day after. When in fact, though, when you look at the facts, what's in the bill in Medicare, uh, it's a 7.2% increase in Medicare. There's no cut. It's an increase. It's a rather substantial increase in Medicare. And then, oh, Medicaid cuts. I've, I've had people talk to me about Medicaid cuts. I've gotten emails. How come you're cutting Medicaid? You're so nasty. You're so rude. You're cutting Medicaid. Well, let's look at those cuts in Medicaid that, uh, that, we, that we, in our budget. It is a 9% increase in Medicaid. There's not a cut there. It's a 9% increase. Washington is the only place in the world, well, government is, where a 9% increase is said to be a cut. 9% increase is a 9% increase. The facts are the facts. Here it is. But yet, you've heard that before, I'm sure, accused of cutting, uh, cutting uh, Medicaid. And then, of course, oh, we're cutting education. That's why we have to raise taxes, you know, because we're cutting education. If we don't raise taxes, we have to cut education. Oh, really? Except that it's a 6% increase in our budget in education spending. A 6% increase. Oh, one that I've heard time and time again. And this one kind of is, is, is annoying because, because of the time. I'm trying to use veterans, I'm trying to use veterans, saying that we're cutting veterans, funding for veterans. Well, you know something? That's just not true. It's a 10.7% increase over 2003. 10 it's a 10.7% increase. That's not a cut. They don't exist. It's not there. It's not true. But again, some will say, don't let the facts confuse the rhetoric. Don't let the facts confuse the issue. The facts are that the plan that we passed, the plan that, that's very similar to the President's plan, provides for jobs, creates jobs, keeps more money, the American, allows the American people to keep more of their money. It's not a gift from government. Allows the American people to keep more of their money provides increases in spending for the essential services like Medicaid, Medicare, education, veteran services, does so 
in a responsible fashion. And those are the facts. Now, again, I assume, though, that you would probably tell me that, that that's nothing new, right? Saying that a 10%, 10% or 10.7% increase uh, is a cut. That's something that I guess the other side is used to saying quite a bit. You know, we hear it all the time, and you know, you mention that the facts often get distorted. And they get distorted to try to say and try to convince us in all cases that we need to spend more on X, Y, or Z. And you have the benefit of many of our constituents coming in and speaking with us. And if they represent a category of spending, it needs to go higher. Uh, if they represent a business, we need to do something for their business. And, and I have to tell you, to, to, to increase the activity in that business, I have to tell you the confirmation, one of the strongest confirmations that I have for your earlier statements about the complexity of the tax code and the burden of that tax code upon our, our economy, upon our families, is that the one group that sort of stands out from all the rest is when I speak with my fellow certified public accountants. Now, certified public accountants that, that help with preparing those tax returns, you might think want the tax code to be more complex so they can have more business. But they're all to a person telling me whether I'm visiting them in their one or two or three person uh, firm in a, in a small town in Minnesota or otherwise, they're saying we've got to reduce the complexity of this tax code. This tax code, you know, reduces the trust that people have in their government. It, it takes away far too many uh, of our resources to devote to something that, that doesn't do anything for our competitiveness as a country. And, and one of the areas that they often single out as being just really out of control is the alternative minimum tax. And the alternative minimum tax was put in many, many years ago with the intent of making sure that we all paid taxes, and it was targeting those at the very top. But, but they never changed the dollar amount. And the years and the decades have passed, and now it is, it is being not just a, a burden of additional cost to people where it's being unfairly applied, but the complexity of it in having to pull so many moderate to middle income to lower middle income families into it is, is astoundingly uh, burdensome. And so I'm also pleased that part of what we did in the relief that we passed last year, last week, I'm sorry, uh, was to increase the AMT exemption so that the other provisions weren't causing more people to be dumped in to this quagmire of a mess uh, with AMTs. So uh, we do need to uh, invest in our priorities, and we are in our budget, as you so eloquently uh, pointed out. But we also need to reduce the burdensome elements of our taxes and, and our tax preparation and get a simplified form, which with this AMT relief is moving us in that direction.